get off my lawn. That's right. In fact, we want our MTV. Some of you recognize the sound of the rocket. I want my MTV. The sound of the music. Back in the day, when we were kids, teenagers growing up, we wanted nothing more than our MTV. Countless of wasted hours watching music videos. Uh, wanting to be the artist, imitating the artist. Um, they spawned thousands, if not millions of bands, millions of dancers. And uh, now it has become a shell of what it once was, uh, not even remotely close to what it once was. But MTV uh, is the subject of our Get Off Our Lawn segment here, the side portion of the It Came From Gen X show. Welcome, I'm Keith Porter with Brian Fisher and Mike Skinner. Fish, I want my MTV. Yeah, man, 40 years ago, it's hard to believe. I remember uh, it was this, so this would have been, uh, well, for us, summertime. It was summertime going into eighth mm -hmm. grade for you and I, Keith. I know. Yeah. And uh, I remember my dad, I was playing out in the street, and he came out and said, Hey, there's a new, we had cable back then, which is like, yeah, it was like, uh, uh, you know, that was a luxury, you know, back mm -hmm. in that time, you know, to have cable mm -hmm. and you, yes. had, you had Star Channel and some of those stuff. Yes. And he goes, there's a new music channel. And I was kind of like, what? I could, it just didn't compute as a kid. Right. What do you mean? There's nothing other than music videos on it. I didn't quite get it. And then my buddy who I was playing with in the street, who, lived, who was across the street at the time, my buddy Tim Lester and his brother Greg. So shout out to you guys if you happen to be yes. listening. No, Tim Lester. Uh, we, started to you know watch it and it just like wow and then it just sort of became like you say a thing it, it, you watched it why did you watch it because you wanted to see what was next it, yeah you have to it, it, oh, it's yeah. interesting you say that because it reminds mm -hmm. me what the addiction really was yeah what's next you sat through videos you couldn't stand that's right because you couldn't wait for what was next yes. and when you got that video that you love or that new song from the band you love it was almost like a drug it was it yeah. was an amazing feeling um I, I wish the young people could really understand how exciting it was skinner yeah well the new new people can just go to umt uh go to youtube and look at the videos nowadays right yeah, but, yeah, but they'll, no, they'll, they'll, they'll never get them it's you know they'll never get that feeling no they'll it, never have totally the feeling that now. we had the world premiere video at Saturday yeah. night at eight o'clock. Those words never, sent chills the, down your spine. You made sure that you were in front of the television at eight o'clock on Saturday night, and it didn't didn't care what genre of music it was. You wanted to see that video. Like you said, it was a drug. It was an addiction that we had, uh, especially all of us that you know. Our common theme, if you folks are listening out there. Our common theme, we have two common things, sports and music. And I think music is the forefront for all of us. Right. Um, and that's how we all stayed friends for so many years. Uh, and music has been one of those things that we can always lean back on. But, uh, yeah, I, I remember MTV when I was a kid. I absolutely loved it. Couldn't wait for to get home from school so I could turn it on. And then exactly. there was the different types of videos on from six to eight o'clock, it was this type of music. Right. And then, like you said, that world premiere, I always, I'll never forget that. And they, they pumped it for a oh, week. Oh, they hiked so it. So you made they? sure you didn't forget. And you, you know what I loved about the videos back then? This was before the emergence of CGI, uh, mm -hmm. all the special effects. You watched the video, you watched the artist. Yes. And I, it, mm -hmm. come on, was there anything better than, 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 than Pat Benatar? Just standing there doing her thing. The I think the earliest first video I remember seeing was "Beat It," and watching Mike Jackson and, and group dancing. Nobody was doing that. Everybody's doing it now. But you know when Mike was start dancing with the gangs. I mean that was something, man. Even things like uh, Mel John Cougar. It was no Mel Camp then. I don't care who it was. You saw the artist performing, and yes. that was it. You know, uh, Def Leppard's fooling. Uh, my goodness, the list goes on and on. It, it was something to behold. And then there was Dire Straits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that kind of changed everything uh, <laughs> a little bit, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, but you're right. That's what it was. It was the it was the the artist and the band, 
was featured on all those early videos. You got to see them actually, of course, some were lip lip syncing, whatever, but they were playing their instruments mm-hmm. up there doing something. Uh, I'll give a shout out to you know a a, a, a recognized the Sirius XM. So three of the original VJs, Alan Hunter, Mark Goodman, and Nina Blackwood, yes, still host '80s uh, shows on Sirius XM. Uh, uh, downtown every... Julie Brown is still doing, I think, 80s on eight or 90s, doing 90s. on nine. One of those two. You're okay. right. 90s on yeah. nine. You're right. Yeah, because she and was then, a little later. Yes, absolutely. And Nina Blackwood came. So they did a they did a, re, a reunion that's on demand on Sirius XM right now. And they went back and redid the first couple hours of MTV songs. That's they awesome. had people come on and talk about it. Very, very interesting. Good stuff here. It took me right back to that. But you can still listen to them every week on the That's 80s. Great. Still very interesting, very entertaining people. But of course, yeah. first video uh, they ever play, uh, Video Killed the Radio Star. That's right. Uh, yep. And then I believe second was uh, Benatar. Pat Benatar was Pat. the first female and first yeah. electric guitar was her husband on MTV. Yes. Most right underrated there. guitar player in rock, you Neil know, Geraldo, Lovey. Uh, I learned, by the way, too, the first heavy metal band was Iron Maiden, Iron Maiden, within the first 20 videos ever Mm -hmm. on MTV. Yes. There you have it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's something. So um, my biggest complaint growing up with MTV as a drummer, there were certain songs that had iconic drum fills. It doesn't have to be iconic. I don't have to use that word. But it was a huge drum fill in the song. And, you know, the camera was on the singer, cameras were on the guitar players, and you would wait to see that drummer do this fill and and, and how and, and how he's doing it and, or she. And the camera's on something stupid, and it never seemed to fail. Why won't you show Tom Sawyer? You know how long we had to wait to get an alternate version of that video to see the, probably oh. the most iconic drum fill ever in his rock history. Right. Um, so that was my biggest complaint about with MTV growing up like that. Uh, here's a here's a comment that we have. According to the documentary, and this is I'm reading off of a, a 40th anniversary article. It says MTV only had 250 videos to work with during its first year on the air. Wow. And in quotes, it says it had to be a pretty bad video for us not to play it. I'm sure. But I tell you what, it did matter because it was new. And we didn't mind mm-hmm. watching all those foreign videos of groups we had never heard of. Who Who is you two? Okay, whatever. You know what I'm saying? We watched all right. that stuff. We regurgitated it. It became part of us. And it made those guys bigger than life. It made them so rich because the whole world uh, heard them, you know, for the first time. And it was always on. So songs were stuck in your mind. Cried in the name of love. That was like the first YouTube hit. And now he's probably he's like he's the richest rock star in the world, yeah, besides Paul McCartney, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Bono's worth about close to a billion dollars right now. So just amazing to see where it's come from. Now, guys, what has happened? Well, you know, before we get to that, sorry, if you don't Go mind. Ahead. You already Take mentioned point, Michael. Fish. I already mentioned Michael Jackson beat it, one of your favorite videos. Mm-hmm. Before we get into when it turned, what are some of your favorite videos that you've you enjoyed? Oh, Back my in the gosh. day, Good growing question. up here. Okay, can I go? Sure. Uh, 99 Red Balloons or hmm. 99 mm-hmm. Luft Balloons for the uh, German yep. version. Mm-hmm. Uh, that struck me. That was something. Um, I like uh, uh, the Steve Winwood. Uh, can't remember the song, but I really enjoyed that. Um, I loved, uh, gosh, there's so many cool videos growing up. And, and I'm trying to stay out of the, the hair metal stage because I'm, I'm talking about the early MTV uh, days. Mm-hmm. So, so why don't you go ahead and uh, see what you got, Skinner. Let me see if I can find some of the early ones. Well, a couple of, well, one of the biggest ones for me, and it still is to this day, is November Rain from Guns N' Roses. There's just something about that video. I know it's a nine minute and eleven second song, but not that's kind of modern though. On the rooftops. Are, are we just talking about overall? Uh, yeah. Talking about overall, oh, okay. Well, that's that easy. My, yeah. One of my that's favorite first videos year. of all time. 
Robert Plant is another one. She's so irresistible. Uh, th- th- or Robert that's Palmer. another one. Robert, Robert Palmer. Palmer. Sorry. Yeah. And um, there's another one. It came from the movie. Um, uh, Patrick Swayze was in it with um, Sam Elliott. Uh, Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Yes. Uh, he was a blind gentleman that he yes. sung in a bar. And I'm yeah, trying to remember uh, what his name is. Um, um, but come on. Anyway, his video that he was behind a glass screen at a, at a rowdy bar uh, was a pretty cool video, too. Uh, I know that's a wide variety of different types of styles, but it was those those ones that's come to mind for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that yeah, that was a real band. And uh, his name was it's, it's going to kick Healy. me in the. Je- Jeff, Jeff Healy, Healy band, yes. It. Oh yeah, he yes. had he, he, he had the guitar on his lap and he would play it that way. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so yeah. some mm-hmm. of my favorites and since we're just going all around, mm-hmm. um, uh, I, you said Iron Maidens, and one of my favorite was uh, Iron Maidens. Uh, um, of the dark. Uh, Fear of the dark. Fear of the dark. Mm-hmm. The live version of that. I think one of the greatest uh, masterpieces ever made. Um, I loved um, everything by Pat Benatar. Yeah, I, yeah, just a uh, video master in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I loved everything by Tears for Fears. Uh, hmm. Other video masters, I thought, and man, I thought David Lee Roth's uh, <laughs> first solo hit. Sure. When that came out, I was like, Van Halen, watch out. With Steve Vai, Billy Sheehan, I mean, man, that was just awesome. Uh, awesome Yankee first Rose. video. Yankee Rose, man. He did, he did California Girls prior to that. Which yeah, that was a great video. And then video, uh, Just Gigolo was one of my favorite videos as mm-hmm. well. So yep. that was great. Um, the crew, crew had some of the most classic videos. <laughs> Too Young to Fall in Love, one of my favorite of all time. Yeah. Um, how about Jump by Van Halen? One of the most classic videos. Six hundred dollars with one single camera, and became mm-hmm. one of the biggest videos of all time. Man, talk about managing your books. <laughs> that was a all great right, video. Yeah. So yeah, Fish, I could go on and to, on and on. So before we get to yours, Fish, here's the top five videos of all time, and this is based on um, broadcasts from the 1980s through. November 24th, 1989. Okay. Top five goes Bon Jovi, Wanted, Dead or Alive. Pretty good video. Mm-hmm. Def Leppard, on the, Pour on the Some butte, Sugar whatever. on Me. Yeah. Pour, uh, dire Straits, Money for Nothing. Yep. I didn't realize this one, but this is a hell of a video. Sledgehammer from Peter Gabriel. Oh, gosh. Oh, that was yeah, a great that's video. a heck of a video. And can you all guys guess motion. what the number one video of all time is? Thriller. Thriller by Michael Jackson. Thriller, which yes. Will never be topped. A small movie, yes. Yeah, it definitely was. Yeah, Thriller was Thriller was fun. I mean, it, you know, that was something that when that one came on, you stopped what you were doing and you would pick it up and watch the rest of it, whatever mm-hmm. stage it was in, because it was just so cool. With John, I can't think of the directors now. Was a is a pretty famous director that did direct Animal House. Landis, Landis, that's right. Landis. Did Animal House and a few movies back in the day. Special effects were terrific. Like you say, no CGI back then. It was just makeup, nope. dancers, zombies, the whole thing. That was uh-huh. really, really cool. Uh, but even prior to that, so I cannot hear the song. I could feel it coming in the air tonight by Phil Collins and not picture that damn video. Because that was one uh. of the first. When they, <laughs> it was in the, that was in that early rotation. It, was like, it, was, it seemed like it was every fifth video yeah. back then. It felt <laughs> like that Sounded just a like, close-up yeah, of his face did. and the black. And him sing, yes. and then it shows the, the mannequin, the head explodes and all that stuff. Great, great song. Great, simple, simple video back then. Uh, a lot of concert videos are great back then. And when uh, Michael Jackson came out with Billy Jean was the first video that I remember seeing of him. I think that was his first video, actually. Watching him walk down the street and everything he touched on this on the sidewalk lit up. Oh, the yeah. rail, it, they would that light up. And it, the effects were great. Super talented dancer, obviously. Super great performer. And when you saw that video, that was like, oh, wait, oh, this is something special here that I'm yeah. watching here. 
great, great stuff. Madonna had great videos back then. The Cars had a lot of great I, videos. I, you might I think. like videos like I, I like John Cougar hurt so good. You know, even though that bar, was just a, a dirty looking, bar video. Grungy looking video. Yeah. yeah, and then when we had the British way, I love like Keep Feeling Fascination by the Human League. You know, things sure. like that, man. It's just a lot of fun. A lot of fun. So I'm I'm scrolling through here as I'm listening to you guys, and you guys named quite a few of these that are in the top 50. Here's one that made this list at number 21, and I'm kind of surprised by this, and I'm absolutely shocked that I didn't mention it before hmm. I even pulled this up, is uh, uh, the band AHA, Take On oh, Me. Oh, Take yeah. On Me. That was an excellent video. That was, that that was, was revolutionary. Super cool video. Yes, yeah, it really was. And that Very video was way before its time. Absolutely. I, I think back on uh, you know, Duran Duran, Hungry Like the Wolf was a higher mm-hmm. production video. Oh, yeah. Like the, the Raiders reflex. of the Lost Ark feel. The reflex was great. I would race home from junior high to see the reflex. Yeah. <laughs> Duran Duran's number 16 on this list for Hungry yes. Like a Wolf. Absolutely. And Prince back then, too, had some great, great videos. Oh, my God. Doves Cry. Oh, Doves that, Cry. That was a terrific my video. Yeah. Raspberry Beret. Kid. I mean, I he had some great, great stuff back I, then. I'm at so, top 25, and Prince is not even mentioned, but some of his videos yeah, were just doesn't crazy. make any sense. Yeah. doesn't make any sense. But the, but the idea, like you said, yeah, I think you, you hit it on the head earlier. It was that these are – they featured the band. They featured the artists. They had stuff going on around them, which got more clever over as the years progressed and all that. And then we started getting performing. cheated. Remember, mm-hmm. we, we started getting cheated by bands where they would have videos. The band was nowhere near in the video. I right. hated those. I hate, I can hear this on the radio. I, why do I want to watch this stupid stuff? I, I hated those. Right. There was no effort put into them. I think right. it was bands who were on the road, had to phone something in, to try to stay yep. relevant, and then put in the money or the effort. So I hated that stuff. And when they got into uh, Headbangers Ball... Guys, that was a to, at least for at least for me. I'm sure for you guys, oh, yeah. that was a whole oh, yeah. that was a whole other level because they would package up the heavy metal quote unquote oh, videos. Man, it was like Saturday nights or whatever it was, eleven to ten one. To time it was ten to minutes. They did no better, and you know we thought that that would be the only place we could see those videos. And lo and behold, metal took over MTV. Remember, they started having their top ten, and the first mm-hmm. five was you know like Home Sweet Home, Skid Row. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Metallica, um, Metallica's one, one of the greatest videos ever made. Yeah. Um, incredible deep story uh, from the mm-hmm. movie Billy Got His Gun. Uh, tr- tragic story. So that that was that number one at one point, Todd. Yep. Sorry. Right, so when so we we had a lot of fun with it for for definitely a handful of years. Definitely through. Yeah, so when did it start to? T- I remember it's like eighty one, definitely through eighty five, eighty six. I'm trying to even think when I was I'm, a senior. I'm not going to even look it, it up. Sort of. I'm not going to look changing. it up. Not going to yep. look it up. I'm going to give my opinion of when it but all went down. Through high school, through high school was pretty solid. But after high school, Keith, I don't know for me, it was like right. Why well, not going to give a date? I'm not yep. going to give a date. I'm going to give mm-hmm. you something else. Go ahead. The real world. Yep. The uh-huh. real world. Was that the start? I believe that was just that we got a taste of what is now known today as reality television. Mm -hmm. And whoever in charge, powers that be at MTV saw, man, there's a lot of money in this. And, Mm -hmm. you know, they they had how many real world seasons that they had? That was the start of reality television. And they made so much money off of it. They started programming more and more shows. And then they finally left us alone, us, us Gen Xers alone, and said, we got to start catering to these this younger crowd. Mm-hmm. And it was all about the the, the the funny shows. You know, now they got wilding out and, uh, and all this, other, which, is, which is funny. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that show. It's pretty crazy. But uh, and then you know, teen moms are pregnant and all this other crazy stuff. But, did Ren and Stimpy star on MTV? I think they did. Did they? I don't know. That's a good question. And of course, there's Beavis and Butthead and all those that were on there. Oh, Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, did Beavis for sure. and Butthead's another one. So shows yeah. and programming, they saw the market for that. Uh, even even MTV Spring Spring Break. Yes. You know. Uh, it became more of a show network than about videos. 
Well, here's something from VJ. Adam Curry said that MTV actually never really made a lot of money playing videos 24-7. Financially, even during the best of times in the mid-80s, MTV was more or less just staying afloat. That is until they started introducing game shows and diversifying the network. And the television show Remote Control was the one I was trying to figure out. And so I was guessing. I I wasn't even looking that up. But I'm sure it was about the dollars and cents having shows and broadcasting. Because what you get when you get that, you got sponsors. Now, I think MTV was an accident. Okay? Because there was videos way before MTV. You know, way before MTV. There's videos in the 70s. But Mm -hmm. I think MTV was the first one to say, you know what? If we can package this and do it 24 seven and give an avenue for the, for the kids, the artists will clamor to give us product, mm-hmm. which the product was probably free, but I don't think the model uh, of MTV was, was worked out as well as it should have been. They should have foresaw how can we generate income from this? Um, certainly if they were smart, they would have got a percentage from the artist sales, especially if the artist sales increase because they mm-hmm. made multi-millionaires out of people who sure. otherwise we, maybe we might not have known, you know, some stupid young dancer from New York city named uh, Madonna Ciccone. You know what I mean? So there was, there was not a lot of money to be made in it, but the programming that brought corporate sponsorship and boom, I'll go to videos. Mm-hmm. That's good stuff. Good subject matter. It's uh, get off my lawn. It is. Yeah, like you said, it's never going to be recaptured. You'll never be able to recapture it because, like you said, the so you mentioned already, Skinner, the social media. If if you make a music video, uh, you put it out there in social media. Anybody can pick it up. Anybody can watch it. You can find anything Mm -hmm. you want. You can find all the old videos we talked about right there on YouTube right now for free. They're all there. So it's just a different thing that they'll never. They'll just never be able to recapture it. Yeah. I don't think it's just it's just a it was just a it was a product of its time. It really was. Sure. And artists nowadays, you know, have to promote themselves. Um, obviously, you can't even make a whole lot of money off of albums anymore because right. people pull them right off YouTube or stream them and download them, you know. And so you have to have to find new ways and new avenues to make money. Um, you know, back in the day, if you were in a great band, you know, you play clubs. And you hope the promoter, uh, or, or not a promoter, but uh, a record label executive came out and saw you and signed you to a big deal. Happened in lots of bands. Ben Halen got signed playing to a crowd of about five people. But they signed them because they sounded great and they were acting like they were in front of an arena. Nowadays, when I was told by a record label guy years ago, they don't care about that. They don't care how good you sound. They care about how many records or CDs you sold out of the trunk of your car. Because if you sold 10,000 CDs in Akron out of the trunk of your car, they figured that if they promoted you, you could sell 100,000. And that's all that matters. You don't move any product, they're not going to help you move that product. Right. Well, Good stuff, fellas. I'm glad. Uh, I'm sure we can all agree. I'm glad we were able to uh, experience it when we did. It was yes. definitely a staple in our young lives and it was just the whole thing and created a lot of excitement in uh in in, in definitely it helped uh, i don't know about you know i'm sure you guys think it helped to definitely enhance my love of music it just took it to a an entirely question. different what level. Mm-hmm. absolutely yeah. we, we yeah. learned how to act on stage because of mtv how to look how to do this uh, you know what to listen for and i'm going to say this real quick i as much as we appreciate it i love where we are today to be able to do things on your own, we can have a podcast because we decided to have one, not because somebody signed us to some contract or something like that. So I love where we are today. Absolutely. But if you'd like to sign us to a contract, yes, please you're contact the, <laughs> at, it came from Gen X 330 at the gmail.com. Yeah. Keith will even change his hair color to orange or whatever blue you want, or whatever you want, whatever you want. <laughs> So. Just call him Robin Jr. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas, good show. stuff tonight. Good stuff tonight. Right, folks, I that's... want my MTV. That's right. Back. This is our Get Off Our Lawn segment for It Came From Gen X. We bid you all farewell. Have a great day.
Good night, everybody. Good night.